What's up? My name is Technova here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize the brand new release of Elden Ring. Of course, because this is a brand new game and of course, making a video so close to early release, some things may change by the time you're watching this. And of course, if you're struggling with certain things right now, bugs are going to be patched within the next few weeks. With that out of the way, this video is lightly going to touch on Windows optimizations and then jump into in-game settings to get the most out of your PC. To get even more out of it, check the description down below for really in-depth Windows 10 and 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more. A quick note before we actually start this guide, this game is locked to 60 FPS. While this guide is not going to help you get anything above that, because that's currently not possible, there's not a mod or anything like that that enables it, it will help you keep a more stable 60. I definitely noticed while playing the game, when doing an action for the first time, it dropped my FPS really badly, but after optimizing it, that didn't happen anymore. This video is especially going to benefit you if you've got a lower end computer that can't exactly reach and keep at 60 FPS or is dropping really badly at some stages. I'll explain how to get those better in the in-game options. As for talking about the game not having ultra wide support, well, over here, I can select 3440 by 1440, my ultra wide resolution. But as you can see, it is most definitely locked to 16 by 9. Hopping into the actual game itself, this is once again confirmed. The black bars on the top and the bottom simply mean that this video is currently being recorded in ultra wide. On top of that, however, the black bars on the side are added for me as well. But anyways, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start with some super basic Windows optimizations. First of all, go ahead and update Windows and your graphics card driver if you haven't already. Hit start, type in update, and go through the Windows update process. Then for your graphics card, in the description down below, you'll find download links for Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. You can either download and install the latest drivers through those links, or of course, if you have software like Nvidia GeForce Experience, you can use that to update your graphics card driver instead. Then let's go ahead and clear out some extra space on your drives, which is especially important if they're near capacity. Hit start, type in cleanup, and open disk cleanup as administrator. If you're prompted to pick a drive, simply choose C drive, the one with Windows on it, and then click OK. When it's done scanning, you'll get a pop-up with a bunch of items. Simply select all of these temporary items as we can remove them from our computer. I usually leave the recycle bin unchecked so I can go through that manually later and thumbnails at the very bottom. Then click OK and delete files. Wait for this to run through to completion. And when it's done, if you have multiple drives, repeat the steps for your other drives on your computer, especially if you have the games installed on those. When it's done, hold start and press R to bring up a new run dialog. Inside of here, type percentage temp, percentage, and hit enter. This will open up our temporary folder. Hit control A, then shift and delete to permanently delete these, skipping the recycle bin. Hit yes, and when prompted for admin, click do this for all and continue. Now wait for it to discover files, and if you hit any errors like this, click do this for all, and then choose skip. Do that as many times as you receive errors. Then head back to this PC, C drive, Windows, and inside of here, scroll down to temp. Open it up, click continue if prompted for admin, control A, and once again, shift delete, enter. Now we've cleared all of the temporary folders on our computer. When you've done so, you can close out of this. Now let's get into the power plan. Hit start and type in power plan, where we'll click choose a power plan. When this opens up, you should have multiple options, balanced power saver, as well as a high performance option. Usually you'll have one of these first two selected. Choose high performance, or of course, if you have specific ones for your processor, such as AMD Ryzen high performance, choose those instead. If you'd like to try out the ultimate performance power plan, in the description down below, you'll find a code that you can copy. Hit start, type in CMD, and open it as administrator. Then inside of here, we'll be pasting in the command using control V. Hit enter, and you should see a success message. Close this, refresh the power option screen, and you'll see a brand new ultimate performance power plan. You should select this. If your device uses a battery, you may want to change it back to balanced or power saving when you're done playing games. Now let's go ahead and optimize our running programs on our computer and ones that start up with our computer. Press Control Shift and Escape to bring up the task manager and inside of here on the processes tab, you'll be able to sort by CPU, memory, as well as GPU. You may need to right click and enable it first. All you're going to want to do is close all of the processes and background programs that are taking up resources that you're not really using. By doing so, you're freeing up tons of resources for your games to use instead. 
Then head across to the startup tab at the very top and sort by status. Everything listed as enabled starts up when your computer logs in. You can disable things you don't need to start up with your computer by right clicking and choosing disable. This will not only help it boot up faster, but it also means that you'll have to close fewer programs the next time you want to play a game. If you're a power user, head across to the services tab and click open services. Inside of here, sort by startup type and everything else that has automatic starts up with your computer. You can double click on something you don't need starting with your computer and change it from automatic to manual. That way, either you or the program will have to start it up when you want to use it. I would recommend not setting any of these to disable. This is a very basic guide on optimizing things that start up with your computer. And instead, in the description down below, you'll find a really in-depth guide that shows you how to get to programs that aren't even listed here. Of course, if you're one who uses overlays, such as the Discord overlay, those could decrease FPS and increase input latency. If you don't actively use them or you don't actively need them, you should try turning off overlays that you don't use. This includes performance monitoring overlays, which you shouldn't have running unless you're specifically benchmarking games. Every tiny bit of available resources matter when you're trying to get the most out of your computer. Finally, let's get into some game specific ones. For this, you'll need to know exactly where the game is installed. For this, I'll open up Steam. I'm not too sure if it's available elsewhere, so the steps may be different if it is. I'll search for Elden Ring and simply right click, hover over Manage and choose Browse Local Files. Inside of here, you'll find two folders, ADV Guide and Game. What we're looking for is the game directory over here and we're gonna locate eldenring.exe. Right click this and click Properties. Then inside of here, head across to the Compatibility tab and then click Change High DPI Settings. And here, tick this box, select Application and choose OK. Now inside of this Properties window, some people get better performance in full screen mode in game when they have this option ticked, Disable Full Screen Optimizations. Basically, without this tick, Full screen games run in sort of a half windowed, half full screen mode where it's quicker to tab in and out, the screen doesn't adjust so much, etc. But it may come at a cost of lower FPS or higher input latency on some computers. I'd recommend that after you finish this optimization guide, you try playing the game with this ticked and without this ticked to see what you get better performance with. More often than not, you'll get better performance with this unticked. So click OK. Now that we've got that set up, we'll right click up here in the path and then choose copy address as text. Now that you have the path copied, hit start and type in GPU, then open graphic settings. Inside of here, you'll want to have desktop app selected and click browse. That'll open up a new file browser. Click at the very top and paste in the address that we just copied. Unfortunately, this is the Windows 11 virtual machine. I use Windows 10 normally, so I'm not able to show you this here. That's why the guide looks a little bit different in some places. But now I'll simply select Steam as an example. When you've navigated across to your game and double click on the game's main EXE, simply click options here and choose high performance, then save. If you have the game installed through something like the Xbox Game Pass, instead of having desktop app selected, rather select a Microsoft Store and then click browse. You'll now see a list of apps installed on your computer. Simply locate the game, click on it, and when it's on the list, options, high performance, save. When you're done with that, on the left-hand side, we'll head across to the Gaming tab. In here, in the Xbox Game Bar section, make sure that this is turned off unless you explicitly use some of the Game Bar features. Then head back and into Game Mode. In here, make sure Game Mode is turned on. Head back once more and into the Capture section here. If you have the Xbox Game Bar installed and enabled, you may have a Shadow Play-like feature enabled by default that records your screen all the time and allows you to save past few minutes. Of course, if you don't actively use this, you should turn it off. You can do so simply here by setting record what happened to off. It's as simple as that. Now, finally, before we actually launch up the game itself, we need to know if the game is GPU or CPU limiting us so we can optimize further. When you're in a demanding scene or running a benchmark in game, hit Control Shift and Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. Head across to the Performance tab and simply see if your GPU is hitting 100% all the time or your CPU is hitting 100%. Whatever is maxed out all the time is what you're limited by. If you find that your graphics card is holding you back, it's a good idea to disable hardware acceleration in other programs on your computer, most importantly, browsers. This includes Chrome, Firefox, and programs based on Electron and similar frameworks like Discord and Steam. In Discord, for example, head across to user settings in the bottom left, then, on the Advanced tab, you'll find hardware acceleration that you can turn off. By doing so, Discord and other programs will use more of your CPU instead of your GPU in the background. They may become more stuttery, 
when lots of animations and video decoding or encoding are going on, so it may be a good idea to re-enable these later when you're not playing super demanding games. Of course, the alternative is to simply close those programs as well, including your browser. Speaking of CPU or GPU limited, if you find that your CPU limited instead of GPU, which this guide is mainly going to focus on in just a bit when we get to the in-game settings, it may be a good idea to actually raise some of the settings in-game to balance out your computer. If you're CPU limited, you'll find that no matter how low you drop your in-game graphics settings, you won't gain any performance. Instead, the game will just look worse and worse while keeping the same performance. If you find that that's happening, it's a good idea to crank some settings up, especially ones that you may notice more than others, such as lighting and shadow effects. But anyways, with that out of the way, let's get into more game-specific options and finally launch up the game itself. If in the future any launch arguments are added, Simply right click the game and click properties and we can add them here under launch options. Currently there aren't many known ones, if any, and of course you'll find some in the comments down below from fellow viewers like you if there are any. But now I'll click play and fire up the actual game itself. On the main menu here, I'll simply head into system. At the very top we're looking for the last tab which is the screen over here. Screen mode should be set to full screen for the best FPS possible and resolution should match the resolution of your display or at least a supported resolution. That way things won't be stretched and or blurry. Auto detect best rendering settings is something you can have on and it should give you the best settings for your PC. Though as far as I know, it only really changes the quality settings preset over here rather than all of the advanced settings individually to match your PC. So I'd recommend turning this off. Just for a baseline, I'll leave it on maximum on my 3090Ti and later on I'll be cranking it down before we get into the advanced settings over here. So let's go ahead and benchmark what maximum actually looks like. So I'll create my hero Kevin, but unfortunately this game is locked to 60 FPS. After a quick Google, well, yeah, that seems to have been announced way back even last year. There'll probably be a patch for this or a mod or something along those lines that enables you to go above 60 FPS, but if you're someone who's sitting below 60 FPS, this guide will definitely help you reach that mark and stay there consistently, especially if you lose a couple of FPS here and there, stuttering, etc. While it's not exactly perfect, there is definitely more rendering here than inside the building. So unfortunately on a 3080 Ti, you won't see a difference when I optimize things here, or at least help you optimize them on lower end graphics cards, but it should definitely help at least somewhat. A bit unfortunate for the video, but if you're someone who's struggling, this will still help you regardless. Anyways, so I'm clicking the options button, heading down to system, and across to display, let's go into advanced settings here. Of course, using this quality settings button over here, we can change between everything in the advanced settings menu here with just a couple of clicks. And of course, we'll need to return to the title menu in order for everything to update. Already though, motion blur and things like that have been turned off. So I'm heading out and back into the game. You can see that things have changed quite a bit. Aliasing is more noticeable, but it really doesn't look that bad for low compared to maximum. That's great news, as you can comfortably turn things down and gain quite a few FPS, making things more stable. Once again, unfortunately, you're not able to go above that 60 FPS cap, however. But shooting an arrow for the first time, there was no FPS drop, or at least a very slight one, where previously I dropped to around 30 FPS on my 3080 Ti. Quite unfortunate, especially if you're quickly comboing things and new effects are popping up that aren't cached or something like that. They could cause massive FPS drops, causing you to maybe miss hits and things like that, making life a bit harder than it should be. So what you'll really want to do is use the quality settings button over here to pick a preset that mostly fits your PC. If you don't really know or you don't need to be pushed all the way down to the absolute lowest, I'd start with a medium here and head into advanced settings. Starting at the very top, texture quality. This is completely controlled by the amount of VRAM on your computer. On low, this game's using 4.5 gigs of VRAM. I've pushed it up too high, so I'll quit out of the game. And it still seems to be taking up about 4.5 gigs. Not too much of a change there. I would think maybe a full reboot is necessary. Or maybe currently things just aren't loading in entirely. Anyways, advanced settings, texture quality. Completely VRAM dependent, and you can either leave it on maximum or high, depending on the amount of VRAM you have. If you have a high-end graphics card with 8 to 12 gigs of RAM, you can probably leave this on high or maximum and get a really good looking game at really no FPS cost. If you're running medium or low end cards, I'll choose medium or low here. Everyone else, I'll choose high. 
Anti-aliasing quality, this is something that's quite noticeable in this game, but of course the higher you push it, the more likely you are to lose FPS and have a bigger draw on your graphics card. Usually I turn this off in every game I play as I don't mind jagged edges for a smoother experience. SSAO, screen space ambient occlusion, isn't anything fancy like ray tracing and is very cheap to run on your computer. You can usually leave this on medium or high, I wouldn't necessarily go all the way up to maximum. Medium is the lowest option we have here, so I'll be leaving it there. Depth of field, this applies blurs to things in the background. As long as you're not fighting things far away, which oftentimes you won't be, you can usually leave this on if you like the effect of it. I wouldn't put it up any higher past medium though. Otherwise, if you like me and you like to see things clearly, I'd turn off depth of field and motion blur right below that. But of course, these two options are things that may improve the cinematic experience and being locked to 60 FPS, well, you can usually afford to leave some of these settings on if you're comfortably hitting that. Shadow quality, lighting quality, and effects quality all have huge effects on your PC. And of course, things like shooting a fire arrow for the first time, a flash on the screen, things like that. If you find yourself losing FPS quite often in combat, lighting and effects quality are two things that you likely want to lower down to low. The shadow quality up here shouldn't really be too much of an issue as there's not too many objects in the scene. There's a couple of big buildings, walls, etc. But it doesn't seem like anything too crazy like an open world game. So you'd usually be safe leaving this on medium unless you absolutely need FPS and cranking it down to low. Once again, lock to a cinematic 60, you can afford to have some settings up. Just the lighting quality and effects quality do have effects when you use certain items, certain effects on screen happen that cause lighting to change. These can be quite taxing and cause FPS drops more so than FPS loss overall. Volumetric quality over here, I'm pretty sure has to do with fog and there's a heck of a lot of it in this game. Leaving it on medium should give you the best visibility here. Of course, you're not able to turn this off. Reflection quality isn't ray traced or anything like that. It should be screen space, and leaving it on low or high is probably good enough. I'd expect low to be quite blurry, especially when you're paying attention to things, and high to be a sweet spot. Maximum, of course, you don't really need here. Water surface quality, however, is something you'll definitely notice when you're around large bodies of water. Having this on low usually leads to games having a more cartoony looking water than a clean, higher quality water that we get with high. I'd leave this on high. Of course, unless you're craving extra performance. Shader quality down here, of course, does have a huge impact on performance, and you'd usually leave this on medium or low. Global illumination quality, this isn't something that usually changes, as far as I understand. That really has to do with the lighting quality up here. This instead just defines how your computer will light everything in the scene, and you usually want this on medium or high for the best visibility. Grass quality at the very bottom is something you can usually turn down in every game, and unfortunately we can't go any lower than medium here. You're not going to be paying attention to grass, especially while you're in combat. So with all of our settings set over here, I'll head back, and that's really about it here. The third tab over here has options for HDR, which shouldn't have too much of an effect on your computer, but if you have this on and things look odd, do remember that there's an adjust image quality button right over here. With that, that's really about it for options. So because this game is locked to 60 FPS and it won't ever go above that, meeting that is your goal. If you find that you're comfortably playing the game, you're free to go ahead and turn up any options you like to make the game look as good as you want. This is definitely a much better place to test out your FPS, and I would expect that here is where you'll definitely notice a difference. In fact, let's go from the optimized settings here all the way up to the maximum and see if we actually notice any changes here. There we go, up to maximum, really no change in graphic fidelity. Things look pretty much exactly the same, which means our optimization worked pretty well if you're someone who's struggling. So unfortunately, this game is locked to 60 FPS, so this isn't going to be as groundbreaking as other optimization guides, but if you're someone who needs it, this will definitely help you, assuming you'd like to get a better looking game without crunching everything down so low and forgetting about it, just accepting it. But anyways, that's really about it for this video. Thank you all for watching, my name is Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.